But what is the most fitting way to commemorate those who are no more, to commemorate those who have perished? We can't be too obsessed with death because at Loha Mason, without life, death has no future. The problem is that museums can become mausoleums, literature can become ephemeral gibberish, statues can be shards of pottery. It's amazing how the anti Semites always believed in anti Semitism. They were sure the Jews must have so much money. But as we explained earlier today in the tour, the thing which drove Polish Jewry was grinding poverty. The average Polish Jew never tasted milk cakes. The closest they ever got was a cup of water where a few drops of milk would be put within to make it cloudy, and that was the closest. A girl had one dress, weekday Shabbos. When she got taller, they would add a hem. And a little bit older, another hem, and yet another hem. And you could almost tell her age like you could recognize a tree by counting the rings. Raul Wallenberg is commemorated by this tree over here, and there's a tree over here for Pastor Andre and his wife Maggie Trochme. What happened was, is Pastor Trochme and his wife, they would get on the phone and say there's an Old Testament in town, which was the code word that there was a Jew. And then he managed to save them, which goes to prove that it could be done. What's the most famous story of the Holocaust? The most famous story is that of Anne Frank. Now, factually, Anne's story is not reflective of the Holocaust. She was in the ghettos, was in the camps, she had a roof over her head, she was with her family, they had a modicum of food, but because it's a story, it's easy to relate to it. Prior to World War I, a loaf of bread in Germany cost 69 Fennig. After World War I, it cost 3 million Reichmarks. By 1921, 50 billion Reichmarks couldn't purchase one-tenth of a glass of beer. People associate their money with their value, hence the expression, how much is he worth? From the time that Bismarck had reunited the country until World War I, Germany had never lost a battle. So it must be there's an enemy from within which stabbed us in the back, therefore our own preservation, to prevent these basilite vermin. And that's how they would refer to the Jews, not as humans, because if you refer to them as humans, what you're about to do is murder. But once you refer to them as parasites, and what do you do with parasites? In a better word, you exterminate, correct. And we're setting the stage for extermination. The Nuremberg Laws, which stipulated that a Jew cannot have relations with a non-Jew. A Jew cannot be referred to as a German or a Nazi. A Jew cannot fly a Nazi or a German flag. You must live in buildings which are marked for Jews. This is the beginning of ghettoization. People mistakenly knew that Hitler blamed the Jews in order to gain power. The fact of the matter is, the sad fact is, he gained power in order to murder the Jews. How else can you explain the fact when he's losing on two fronts, he will not send reinforcements or evacuate the troops because all the trains are allocated and dedicated to annihilation of Hungarian Jewry.